Marie, let's just start with you. The Sterling Alliance, you were part of trying to make that work. Tell us what happened and why you think it didn't happen in the end. Well, I actually think it was a success. <laughs> okay. um, so it was a planning alliance. It wasn't a delivery alliance. It's the only time a road has been taken out of the MRS um, and turned into Stevenson Avenue. So that was a big success. That was changing um, something that uh, had never been changed before and hasn't been changed since. So that, that was the catalyst for making the Stirling City Centre work. Um, we had, as I said, 500 people sort of turning up at council in 2005, 2007, I can't remember, but early on saying, we don't want development here. But by the end of it, we actually had nobody saying they didn't want development and the communities were actually running the open days. We had, um, we had a, 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 a tram tour that was funded by um, Observation City, rendezvous people, when they were doing, their, uh, when they were doing the re renovations there, um, Lend Lease, um, Prime, Prime West, um, Adrian Finney, the Finney Group, Giorgio, IKEA, um, all those people, ABN Group, all those people have been involved, have been supportive. We actually started off with the community being um, wary of, of, the develop, of developers and also um, wary of council. We ended, at the end of the day, those three came to get, those three groups came together and that did de-risk it. An alliance is actually a risk-reward contract. And this, as a planning alliance, um, delivered on that um, to de-risk de the pro process. Um, but it was also, it's also a relation-based contract. And the most important thing was to actually build those relationships and the Alliance helped to actually build those relationships between the community, between the council and, and the development industry. And that's now opened the door for this new development to go forward and, um, and to be realised, I think, in the way that we're sort of thinking that this can happen. Because it's a fantastic opportunity, as you've said, you know, from Glendalow to Scarborough, the Stirling City Centre, we've got everything there to make this not just an activity corridor but a 21st century boulevard which is a, a new way of um, seizing the opportunities of new transport and new technologies um, to make places that are really good places to live and it's a place-based approach not a um, not a top-down approach. When you talked about bringing um, Stevenson Avenue out of the MRS mm. What it did, it's probably the first time a lot of councillors at the mm -hmm. City of Stirling, but also the community started to understand that a road is more than a transport solution. Because mm -hmm. in the traditional Stevenson Highway, it was purely a transport solution. Yep. So by bringing it out as you did, it's actually a development solution. It's to create development uplift. And, and a lot of people wouldn't normally understand that, that a, a road's not about just the transport. It's about trying to create the land potential and the development uplift and create place. So I think that was probably the very start of what we've been trying to do and continue on with That's the trackless right. tram. Yes, in fact, yes. As Stevenson Freeway, it was going to be a divider of the community of, yeah. of the place, and as Stevenson Avenue, with you know the the whole living stream thing, or the you know, <laughs> which was the is the vision. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is bringing amenity to this place and building on that beautiful herdsman lake system, etc., and bringing that into the Stirling City Centre. Yeah, and I think the other key with it is the work the Alliance did in those early 2000s brought the community along on the journey quite early on. So yes. to be able to put something like the corridor in place uh, without that journey becomes really difficult. You know, it was the early start of understanding about activity corridors, the planning framework that takes years to put in place across a corridor mm. like that to, to make sure the community are not only brought along on the journey but understand there's no risk to them. We, you know, when you talk about words like seeding land or, mm. or widening of roads, it scares a lot of people. So you know, that's been a, a generational journey 
to mm. get to the stage that people understand, no, there's no loss for you. It's when you sell your property, there's development uplift and we might need a bit more land to be able to then do what we need to do to, to create right. that um, potential. Yes. And I can remember in Inaloo, you know, so the, the issues that were there, I mean, Ikea went in, which was really like the Disneyland of shopping and all the congestion that yep. that caused when yep. it came in. And, and at, so at that time, they were very diffident about having any more development, mm. and in, particularly in Inaloo. Yep. We actually, we then started to look at place-based um, transport, you know, so having roads as places mm. and, and that hierarchy of roads, which we now say is what place, place and movement strategies. Yep. Place and movement strategies. Back then, place and movement strategies didn't exist. Mm. We called them self-explaining roads. Yep. And Sterling was the one who actually yep. sort of really in, invented it, really, yep. or sort of started to look at how do we do place and movement, how do we do self-explaining roads in Inaloo? Yep. How do we make that a place where people can walk, it's a walkable environment? The stepping down um, into the um, residential areas of the development, so that along the corridor you have these high, higher rise buildings, but then stepping down into these places behind and, mm. and giving the community a, a place, still giving them a place and a role and, a, and confidence that they can continue to live in the place that they love. Mm. And that, look, that's been a, um, a big push from the community, especially over the last couple of years with everything that's mm. happened with COVID. Uh, is understanding the importance of home and their place. Uh, a lot of our projects now are very much place-based. Mm. Uh, there's a resurgence of our local centres and, you know, yeah. again, along the trackless tram right. corridor, yeah. you know, we've got several of those local centres that are already seeing, um, you know, a, a resurgence in, in what's going to be there. Mm. And, and we also, you know, that getting those developers on board, which was a really important mm. part, you know, being interested in um, delivering this project themselves, you know, yeah. We can deliver this. We can assist you to deliver this. Mm. Um, and uh, as we said, you know, there wasn't the mechanism really there for that. Mm. But we've now moved on a bit. We do have uh, uh, provision for market-led proposals, which we didn't have when they first came to the Premier and said that they could deliver the Stirling City Centre vision and the transport. Mm. Um, so there's opportunities now, and you and we're getting it all in place with Stevenson. So it's. It's ready to go, mm. and it's ready to be an example, an example to the rest of Australia, as you say, or the rest of the world, is how this can be delivered. Let's hope so. How do you yeah. feel about, as an original member of the Alliance, how do you feel about the vision? Because there must have been times, I mean, it's a long time ago when it started. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you sat around and thought, how do we make this, you know, old tip sites and, and wasteland and... And yeah, I mean, we call it a living land. stream, but an yeah. Osborne Park drain. Yeah, how, yeah, that's right. You know, how do we make this vision? Uh, yeah. Are you excited about where it's come to now and where it will go? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I suppose, um, you know, I look back on it and, and, you know, Peter's question was, well, where did it fail? Mm. Uh, I suppose it failed at that delivery hurdle. Mm. Um, and that was... That's all part of this sort of alliance-based contracting idea, you know, and everyone had to have skin in the game and everyone had to have a shared risk reward. For some, there was no time penalty. And really, it was probably our state government partners didn't have the time penalty that community, business and local government had. You know, we, we wanted to see it delivered now um, but there was no rush in that. There was no funding to get it, get it up at that time. Um, if we had actually s signed that alliance contract as a proper alliance contract, giving that time penalty, that would have been, or that, sh you know, enunciating more clearly that shared risk reward model, I think we would have overcome the barriers that we came, came up against when it came to delivery. Funding is an interesting one because you asked it before, Peter, um, and it, timing is so important with these sort of projects. And it's almost a shame that you know, good projects that have the planning and everything in place, it still tends to rely on election cycles to get major infrastructure gra um, grants. And this isn't picking on any one side. It, no. it, it's a, just a pattern of, it is. of state and yeah. federal governments. Um, you know, it, it'd be nice to think we get to a stage that, that good infrastructure projects get funded. 
Um, yes. I certainly think that the catalyst of Stevenson Ave has meant that it's, it's a successful project that is more easily attracting the funding and hopefully that will continue. Yes. And, well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because really at the very way back then, we didn't even need the funding. Mm. You know, we had the land, the land was enough to actually fund the project. Mm. Well, so the developers believed yeah. at the time. Yeah. Um, you didn't have the transport in place. Yes. Now you do. You've got the road that yeah. enables it to be opened up for traffic. Yes. And we, and you can run a trackless tram down there, and oh, that that will unlock a lot of that investment. In the end, the idea of the value increasing um, may not have been enough, but it certainly will be now. Yeah, it, it was always transport-led development, though. Yeah. You know, so we were always doing the activity corridor um, studies. It was always, you know, that the Stirling City Centre was about a transport-led. Yeah. A $300 million bridge over the freeway yeah. wouldn't have been part of that. Yeah. No, it certainly wasn't. And in fact, yeah. that wasn't the cost. So that, yeah. I think it did have to go through these extra stages. It did. But um, yeah, now it hopefully will be unlocked. And um, that's a legacy of our time now yeah. to, to make sure we get that bit of funding that can help that. And then there's a whole lot of other investment that will follow yeah. if, we, uh, if we do it right. Yeah. But they're the partnerships that need to be pulled together. And uh, hopefully you can play a role in, because you do know the developers and you have seen what they can do, bringing them together into a process fairly quickly so that when, when the commitment comes, the funding's there, mm. they're in there from the start. Mm. They need to be there from the start. So their ideas are straight in. I think that's right, and I think they became a little wary of it. They they did expend a lot of money and time and effort, Westfield in particular, yeah. in trying to get that Stirling City Centre up. Uh, I think it's providing them with this time, and the fact that Stevenson's built now is providing them with the confidence that this is going ahead. Yeah. Look, and, and again, it's fair to say that the planning framework that's put in place, whether it be through the, the state government agencies in their development areas or with the local government development areas, the requirements of putting on developers to restrict car parking and use public transport, it, we have a responsibility to ensure these projects go ahead at all levels of government. Mm. Uh, you know, we're putting the plan frameworks in place to restrict mm. developers. Yep. We've got to support them with the transport solution. Yeah. 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 Okay, well that's great.